Welcome everyone, Featherblade here with today's lesson, Crash Course on Redstone Devices. When I say devices, I'm referring to the main three pieces of redstone apart from dust, that is, repeaters, torches, and pistons. I'll be going over how each of these pieces reacts to sensors, and the main quirks about them that can be used to create different effects. The Repeater also known as a diode, repeaters are very insensitive. They only convey sensors in one direction and are a lot harder to change on or off than dust. Let's look at a little setup. In this picture, the repeater is facing to the right, as that's how the arrow on it is facing. It will only receive sensors from the base of the arrow, and it will only give them out at the head. If we give it a sense from the left, you will see that the repeater will turn on and light up the dust on the right. But, if we give it a sense from the right hand side, you'll notice that the repeater will not light up. It will stay dim and it won't convey any sensors to the dust on the left. Repeaters will also work well with solid blocks instead of dust. If a solid block is placed behind a repeater, it will convey any sense it directly receives through the repeater and out the other side. A solid block can also be placed in front of the repeater. If the repeater turns on, it will convey through the solid block to any dust adjacent to that block. The rules of solid blocks still apply from last lesson, so dust on top of a solid block will convey sense through to the repeater, changing it on. A repeater will also be able to give sense upwards, downwards, or around corners by allowing the solid block to convey to any adjacent dust. As I mentioned in the last video, while dust has a limit of only 15 blocks before losing its sense, repeaters will strengthen the sense, allowing it another 15 blocks. This means a line of repeaters can keep a sense going forever, making them useful for redstone in large spaces. There is also another function of repeaters with regard to timing. When right-clicking a repeater, the torches get further apart. The wider apart they are set, the more a sense going through will be delayed. However, this isn't too important until multiple devices are interacting together. The torch. Torches are just about the most important device that allows redstone to think for itself without a person telling it what to do. It's good to know that torches orientate a bit differently than that of other pieces of redstone as well. Dust and repeaters are placed on top of another block. While you can place a torch directly on the ground too, often it's more useful to anchor it to the side of a block instead. A torch is different from other redstone pieces in that it gives a sense without actually sensing anything. This torch here, on its own, is turning the dust on. Any dust placed adjacent to the torch, in front, below, or to the side, will turn on. A torch can also convey sense to a solid block above it, allowing for the dust on top of this block to turn on without being adjacent to the torch. To turn a torch off, the anchor block must be receiving a sense from somewhere. This can be done by pointing dust directly at the block, or by placing dust on top of it. You can even use a repeater or a torch, if you like, going off what we learnt today. Just remember that a torch will only convey sense to the block above it, not any other way. Now onto the quirkier physics with the torch. When a torch is turned on and off too fast, it's possible that the torch will burn out, in which it will stop turning back on. This is probably a safety mechanism to stop lag on a server when a bunch of torches are linked up to themselves and they just flash on and off. Burnt out torches will turn back on in a random amount of time though. This means you can introduce randomness to a larger piece of redstone. Actually using this in a practical manner is somewhat complicated, but just keep in mind that torches do have that capability. Torches will also be unaffected by a small pulse of sensors from other devices. Normally, this torch should turn off, but if the sense was too short, it won't respond. 
This won't affect a lot of applications, but it can be an issue if your redstone is too fast. A last note is that sometimes a torch placed facing north or south on the side of a block will act different than when placed east or west. This effect is rare, but sometimes torches will act strangely one way but find the other. One example is this looped redstone wire, which when placed north to south, the torch will flash on and off because it's connected to itself. The same device placed east to west, however, will stay constantly on. As such, if there are no other things you can see that could be stopping your redstone from working, try setting it up 90 degrees to the original. It might just be one of the torches causing a glitch. The Piston Pistons are incredible devices for currently being the only block which will move other blocks around. This gives them a wide number of applications and uses, and are also probably the most glitchy device of the main three. In general, if any dust or blocks convey sense to the piston, it will try to extend. When it can't sense anything, it will retract again, or remain retracted. Pistons are a bit more sensitive than dust or other redstone devices, however. The block above the piston will always convey sensors down, even if it's a transparent block. Let's look at a more visual representation of that glitch. From our knowledge of glowstone being a transparent block, the piston shouldn't extend, even if the dust above senses something. Despite this, the piston will force the glowstone above to convey sensors to it. Another two examples can be shown here. This piston beneath the torch will extend and retract depending on the torch above it. We know it is the block above the piston which causes this issue with a little test. So long as some dust is pointing at the air above the piston, it will extend. If we distract this dust to the side, the piston won't extend, as it isn't receiving any sensors anywhere, even from the glowstone to the side, as that won't convey sensors. This is because the dust isn't pointing at the air anymore. Air being a transparent block, the piston will pull the sensors out of it still. These interactions tend to be unaccounted for in redstone creations, and can create problems when they are overlooked. Sometimes, even when there is a sense in the transparent block above a piston, it still won't extend. This is because the piston was unaware of any change, which means it won't extend even though it normally would want to. This is useful, as if anything is placed near, or changed near the piston, it will make it realize the sense above itself and extend. Once extended, the piston will forget about that sense above itself again, meaning that it will stay extended even if the sense goes away, until something changes near it again. These changes are known as block updates. A wheat crop makes an update when it grows, or a furnace makes an update both when it starts smelting something and when it stops smelting something. A piston set up ready to extend, or ready to retract, will be sensitive to these block updates and can be used to sense them. One very good point I haven't really talked about much with the pistons is the fact that they actually push, or sometimes pull, blocks. Both pistons, normal and sticky, will push most blocks away by one meter, and a sticky piston will also pull them back when it retracts by one meter. It's possible for a sticky piston to lose its grip on a block, however. If a small redstone pulse is sent through less than three tenths of a second, it will leave behind the block that it was holding. You can pick it up again by sending any length signal again. However, if not anticipated, this can cause big issues in any sort of redstone system. Oh, and I almost forgot. A piston can push the blocks underneath other redstone devices and dust without them popping off, provided the new block they're standing on would normally support them. Pistons will never push more than 12 blocks at a time, and will never push adminium or obsidian blocks. Pistons will also not push other pistons that are extended either.
It's possible to ready a piston to be sensitive to block updates by using this knowledge as well. It's a bit more complicated, but it involves making the piston on the left here forget that it's got a sense on it currently. Because the left piston cannot push another extended piston, it'll give up when the right one is extended. This means that the right one can then retract without the left one actually extending. Now the left piston is primed and ready to be released with a block update. You should now have a basic definition of how these main bits of redstone work and a bit of a reference to look back to while working in game. I know that I didn't delve too far into aspects such as timing and block updates, but that will become more useful at a later date. I hope you learnt something new, and thanks for watching.